All right, so today we got Darknet Market arrests. What happened before and after Hansa and Alpha Bay takedown? So there's been some people arrested for meth, you know, the usual, some drug syndicate cases, and then there was an average Joe, well, average Joe, who was arrested with 30 grams of marijuana. So that might interest you, definitely. Anyways, stay tuned for this one. <laughs> my haircut oh. it feels weird but it's i kind of like the short hair i kind of dig it okay anyways so let's start with the one you're probably all curious about which is the marijuana one this was basically a joint operation in pennsylvania and let's begin with what this guy did wrong he was a 40 year old man he ordered 30 grams of marijuana now the reason for these arrests is well number one simply poor opsec this can be anything from poor opsec online to poor OPSEC physically to both. And when you combine both, these are the low-hanging fruit who most likely didn't encrypt their messages through PGP or they used auto PGP or maybe they, unfortunate ones, uh, sent it straight to the DNPs or the DEAs, FBIs, because the PGP keys did get replaced. But chances are these guys are most likely like, oh, fuck you, whatever. They're going to use their own house for ordering, you know, a shit, especially like the meth heads. I'm guessing that's what, not to be rude to people who use meth, but when you're talking about six pounds of meth and 50 people being indicted, something tells me that there was pretty horrible OPSEC and people were ratting each other out all over the place. So anyways, don't use your own place. If you are going to be using your own place, don't ship multiple packages. Don't ship pounds and pounds of stuff that especially like with the higher end stuff like coke, meth, heroin, just don't be doing that. With weed, even over an ounce, that's still a little bit, like, it, technically, yeah, it's a fucking personal amount. I'd say that's a personal amount, but under the eyes of the law, that's still a large dose. And that's where it gets a little tricky with the darknet markets, because, like, you're thinking, oh, I don't want to, I want to save a couple bucks. I don't want to waste my money. I'd rather buy bulk, you know, have enough personal weed for, like, the next two months and be all good, instead of having to make, like, two or three separate orders. But here is where, you know... Whatever, you save $5, is it really worth the jail time? Or you save $5 on a cheap VPN or whatever's going on? No, 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 no. You have to always remember OPSEC is important. So anyways, they busted this guy, 30 grams of wheat, and he shipped it to his own house, and also the package was too big to fit in his mailbox. So this was where it gets interesting. They leave a note, they're like, yo, come up to the P.O. box, or, I mean, not P.O. box, sorry, postal office, right? And now this isn't a red flag in most cases. However, the paranoid people, personally, if I was ordering and I received something that's telling me to go to the post office, I would never do that because why, like, whatever. Okay, so I lost that package. That's fine. Shit, ordered another one. You know, you learn your lesson. You ship to a different address. Never again. You forget about it. Doesn't exist. And I so, and I know some people out there are like, wait, but what? What do you mean? What? What if the package is fine? Like, you just lost a couple hundred bucks. But what if it's not? And you get busted. And you can't be like, oh shit, dude, I, I don't fucking know, because you're getting out of your house. Like, technically. Even, like, like it gets really tricky because you could fuck over your neighbors or someone you don't like by sending them drugs because just saying, oh, well, I had no fucking idea. I don't know who the fuck this is. That doesn't really help you. You still should get a lawyer. But anyways, they busted this guy. He went over to the post office. He shouldn't do that. There was a couple other things. It's just, like, it's a little bit interesting that they went so full out on such a small package. But what leads me to believe happened in this case is just really horrible OPSEC. The guy didn't give a fuck. Anyways, so we move on from that. So that was July 26th, that was announced, and July 27th, the Spanish authorities said that they're investigating a couple cases due to the market takedowns. July 25th, the Australian authorities came out and they're saying that they're acting on a couple cases, and in Australia, they did arrest a couple of vendors. Now, this they were ongoing cases, and then probably when Hans and Alphabet got taken down, that only gave more evidence on some of the vendors that got busted. So anyways, these big ones, this is the next stuff that we're going to be talking about. There was a $1 million fentanyl lab bust, and you know how the government is against fentanyl. They fucking hate opiates. 
And, I mean, I, I hate agreeing with them, but yeah, fentanyl isn't a good substance. I, I think it should be legal and decriminalized. However, I know that there's a lot of risks with fentanyl just being around in general because people are stupid with it. And fentanyl, you only need a teeny tiny bit to overdose and boom, it's all over at that point. But anyways, so they busted a fentanyl lab um, in Arkansas. They busted a, a giant ring, I guess, like 50 uh, people were indicted and six pounds of meth, but you're talking about tens of thousands of dollars at that point, and it's just fucking meth, man. I don't think, me I think meth is overrated, probably. I've never personally used it. I've talked with people who used it, though, and most, well, some, some were probably tweakers, but others were just normal humans who tried it out. It's just like, okay, it's a more advanced version of Adderall, pretty much. It's, it's quite close to it, chemically speaking. There was another man, like, a week before Hansa in Mississippi who was arrested due to meth. There was a controlled delivery of heroin in Ohio. There was a uh, vendor who was arrested, Narco Boss. The next one, there was, there was a lot of meth stories. There was seven people busted in Arizona for, again, meth. <laughs> so mainly the people who are getting busted, like I can keep going through all the details and stuff, but here's two cases that we're seeing. So it's either these large rings with meth or heroin or fentanyl or one of these really controlled substances that of course is going to get a lot of attention. And their mistake is first off ordering a shit ton of it and second off getting a lot of people involved which obviously someone's going to be ratting on another. While the other case scenario is people who are buying like personal amounts of weed which still technically aren't personal so if you're spending a couple hundred bucks on something that's a little bit uh, And then they probably had either criminal records or there was something super off or maybe they were just one of the unlucky ones where the police were like you know what fuck it let's arrest this guy let's make an example yeah. Yeah, let's show it. But seriously, the 10,000 addresses out there worldwide, ooh, that's kind of fear-mongering because logically speaking, the police aren't going to be busting down everyone's door. So unless you had the worst OPSEC ever, which there are people like that who have revealed in the past that, oh, with Silk Road and all that shit, there's people who had their address out there in clear, plain view and nothing happened. There's people who are admitting right now that, oh, shit, nothing happened just yet. They could be investigated. But there's, it doesn't seem like there's a lot that's going to be freaking going on. So unless you're a vendor or big-time buyer, or you just had, like, the worst obstacle in the world. But even with that, if you bought, like, two grams of weed, like, you have to think about it logically. If most likely you, well, first of all, use that shit so when they bust down the door, there's nothing there. And also encrypt your laptop and put, you know, some shit on there. Smear the shit all over so it's nice and tasty for <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fucked up. But the people who were getting arrested for weed, like, that's still... And these were states that aren't really too friendly for weed anyways. By the way, shipping weed across state lines, even if it's an illegal state, that goes against, like, federal stuff, so it's illegal at that point. You just gotta be careful about that. Anyways, me reading out everything would kind of get repetitive, so I'm just gonna link you guys down stuff below. If you're super interested, you can check that out. But this is kind of like an update... You don't really have to be that paranoid. Like, maybe some of my videos were kind of like fear, uncertainty, doubt, ah, oh, throw it out. But, again, I, I, I'm probably like a broken record. But if you have good OPSEC, and going into the future you need to have good OPSEC, everything's going to be fine, kids. In relation to the darknet markets out there, uh, I will be making those reviews pretty soon, so get excited about that stuff, yeah. Anyways, my name is Mike. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and share. And we shall see you guys tomorrow. Bow. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw, check out the links in the description below. Follow me on my other social media, and we shall see you guys back tomorrow.